I'm Paul Jackson with PBT. You're watching the latest edition in our ongoing series of remote battery monitoring tips. Hi, I'm Joe Rocky, president of Phoenix Broadband Technologies. And today I'm here with my partner, Walt Wilzuski. And we want to talk to you a little bit about the importance of properly setting the float voltage on your batteries in order to get the proper float charging current. So Joe, I was talking with one of our partners the other day and they were telling me that their battery manufacturer was giving them a lot of trouble because the charging voltage on their 48 volt battery was just two tenths of a volt below where they expected it. Is it really that important to be that accurate? Well, you'd be surprised. Just millivolts of change in the float charging voltage can produce very large changes in the float charging current. Is that true and, and what is float current? Float current is the small amount of DC current that the charger has to supply in order to overcome the battery's internal leakage. In a constant voltage charger, a small amount of charge current is necessary to keep the battery fully charged, usually about 30 to 50 milliamps per 100 amp hours of battery capacity. So can I think of this like a, a bucket of water with a tiny little leak on the bottom and a dripping faucet into the top? That's a pretty close analogy, Walt, but it's very important to keep the charging voltage exactly right. A small change in float voltage can produce a dramatic change in float current. Yeah, are you sure? I'm it... absolutely sure. Do you want to see a little experiment? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay, Walt, you wanted to see it? Here it is. I set up a bank of 12 2-volt cells that make up a 24-volt string. These aren't large cells like you might find in an actual installation, but the effect for larger cells would be even more pronounced than what I'm going to show you. We have a variable laboratory power supply that simulates a charger and two meters, one meter to measure string voltage and another one to measure charge current. Right now the charging voltage is set to 27 volts and you can see that the charging current is extremely low, only a few milliamps. If left in this charge state, the cell plates would eventually sulfate, destroying the cells. Now I'm going to slowly increase the charging voltage by only a few hundred millivolts. Notice that the charge current changes extremely rapidly from almost zero up to several tenths of an amp. If left in this state, the cells would eventually heat up and dry out, destroying them and possibly leading to a thermal runaway. Holy smokes, that's a pretty big change. I can see why the set points need to be so exact and how monitoring could be a real value here. Thanks. Great information as always. For Phoenix Broadband, I'm Paul Jackson. Until next time, may the power be with you.